Wild Bastards takes the roguelike chaos of Void Bastards and drags it through a dusty sci-fi Wild West. As a spiritual successor, it doesn't just dip its toes into familiar territory, rather it kicks down the door guns blazing. And this time, you're not just surviving in space, you're outgunning enemies and outsmarting them in a wild hybrid of first person shooter, strategy and roguelike action. But does it deliver the same brilliance we loved? Or is this one simply shooting blanks? Let's grab our space cowboy hats and find out. If you do enjoy today's review then do us a favour, subscribe, it helps out the channel a huge amount. The story in Wild Bastards is one of revenge, resurrection and a desperate race across the galaxy. The Wild Bastards were once the most feared gang around, that is until Jebediah chased an individual with a serious grudge sent his posse to wipe them out. Now one by one the gang was eliminated, leaving only two members standing. Now these last outlaws, they team up with the Drifter, a mysterious sentient spacecraft, to resurrect their fallen comrades and flee to the mythical homestead. It's a high stakes chase across the galaxy mixing sci-fi and western themes beautifully. I really enjoyed the story in Wild Bastards, especially the large and varied cast of characters, and the posse here is made up of 13 unique members, each with their own personality and backstory, which is more than you'd expect for a game focused on gunplay and strategy. But the game keeps its story front and centre with constant dialogue exchanges between missions, and I really appreciated the attention to detail and the fact that you get to learn about all of these characters in depth, it really helped keep me invested. Now when it comes to gameplay, Wild Bastards sets itself apart from its spiritual predecessor, Void Bastards, in a big way. In Void Bastards, death meant going all the way back to the beginning, a real roguelike gut punch, but here, you only get sent back to the start of the sector, meaning each area has a distinct goal, it's usually to save and resurrect one of those missing Wild Bastards, but it's a small but welcome change, it gives you that sense of forward progression without the frustration of losing everything. As you progress through Wild Bastards, the maps expand in size, offering more ground to cover and more decisions to make. Now, each tile brings a consequence. Sometimes it's discovering, as a single example, a broken down spaceship with loot, and other times it's beaming down to a planet for a mission. And when you hit the surface of a planet, you're not just thrown into a fight. These planets have their own maps, and here's the catch. You can't warp jump your ship until you destroy a radar that is jamming your signal. Now this radar gets knocked out as soon as you open the battle map, but now you need to get to the warp point to get back aboard. Between you and that warp point, battles with a mix of stationary and roaming enemies, all controlled by a fast paced turn based system. The movement here is limited, 8 tiles or so at a time, so you're going to need to strategize quickly. Along the way then, you'll collect goodies like cash, character modifiers and items like a beacon that can instantly beam you back to your ship if you are in a tight spot. Now this may sound fairly relaxed, you know, explore at your leisure, right? Well actually the game adds tension with a nemesis from the gang that's hunting you down. These enemies range in difficulty and there's a countdown advising you when they will land on the planet. And trust me, you're going to want to be far from that landing pad because these nemesises are an absolute pain to deal with. While the exploration and strategy elements are solid, the gunplay is really where Wild Bastards shines. When you beam down to a planet, you'll select up to four characters to bring along, split into teams of two. But here's the thing, missions have their limits, and you'll really need to think about what the core map is telling you about the planet. You know, the environment and the enemy types play a huge role in who you take with you. So for instance, some planets are in perpetual at night, so I brought along a character who can highlight enemy locations. On a low gravity planet, I figured using a single shot weapon might be trickier, so I opted for a spray and pray approach instead. And this is all to say basically the characters themselves are just incredibly varied. You've got a spider lady with dual pistols, a shotgun welding robot named Casino, and a snake like character with a lasso. Each has their own unique strengths, some thriving stealthy situations like the lasso user, while others, like the dual pistol character, just excel in chaotic battles. I do also want to note here as well, unlike Void Bastards, which had expansive locations to explore, Wild Bastards offers more compact arena battles. They're short and sweet, and while I occasionally missed those larger areas, I found the fast-paced nature of these encounters to be a refreshing change of pace. You know, the concept is really simple. Clear out however many enemies are at the location. As you do explore these battlefields then you'll be picking up items, health, armor and rage which actually boosts power. Each character also has a special ability like auto-targeting or 
deploying a decoy to help out in those tough situations. You'll also be controlling then in battle two characters at a time, switching between them on the fly. On the actual planet map then, that can hold up to four characters at once. But again, mission limits will keep you on your toes. Sometimes there are limits on who and how many you can take. Each new sector then as well additionally introduces fresh enemy types, each with unique abilities and powers. You're going to be facing everything from snipers and mages to wild animals that have been sent after you. The game's definitely not shy about getting creative with its enemy designs and it definitely keeps things unpredictable here. On top of managing your team during these battles then as well, you'll also need to consider how your characters develop over time. Now when you enter a new sector you get temporary buffers. These modifiers they reset with each sector, basically every time you do a warp jump it says that everything here gets destroyed. However, there are also permanent upgrades in the form of cards. You can collect these during planet exploration and they grant bonuses like extra strength or more health and they are definitely simple but effective. Then there's actually a relationship aspect of the game as well, which to be honest with you felt a bit frustrating. Characters either become friends, helping each other out, like having a character that delivers health packs on the battlefield should your health be running low or they alternatively do fall out, refusing to team up or even beam down to the planet together. It just kind of felt a little random, like forced difficulty. Look, sure, you can fix it by sharing beans, a collectible food item, but I personally could have done without this feature. Finally then, I do want to talk about the length of this game. I spent 10 plus hours on the core campaign on normal difficulty. There's five difficulty options to choose from, so there's plenty of replayability here. But once you do finish then as well, you're going to unlock a mode called Challenges, accessible from the main menu. These are designed to really push you to your limits. That said though, on this note, I did feel the main campaign dragged a bit towards the end. By the time I reached the final stretch, I was really kind of ready for it to wrap up. The arena style of combat is, you know, fun, but after a while, it does get a bit repetitive, more so than what we saw in Fired Bastards. As for performance then, Overall, it's decent. I've learned from my Void Bastards review not to judge too harshly on frame rate drops, and I won't make that mistake here. However, in some of the larger arenas, you will notice drops. They're not game breaking by any means, but they are still there. Still, though, look, despite these minor hiccups, the game remains completely playable, and yeah, I wasn't disappointed. Visually then, Wild Bastard stands out with its unique cell shaded almost comic book style aesthetic. It's bold, colourful and full of personality, though I did find that sometimes it's a bit tricky to spot enemies as everything can blend together in the chaos. That said, I have to praise the sheer variety between locations, whether you're battling on a dusty planet or a neon lit alien stronghold, each area just feels distinct. Also, the roguelike maps, both overworld and planet, are clean and easy to navigate. And with so many systems at play here, they've done a really fantastic job creating a UI that's intuitive and easy to understand. The animations then are well done, and there's a nice variety in both the bastards and the enemies you face, which helps make every character and foe feel unique. When it comes to audio then, Wild Bastards mostly delivers. The weapons sound solid, packing a real punch, and I was pleasantly surprised to find full voice acting of a high quality. The little sound effects like the ship warping make all the difference when it comes to immersing you in the world. However, I was a little let down by the soundtrack. It needed to be more intense, especially during the heat of battle, but instead it settled on repeating the same motifs that don't always pay off. So overall, the Wild Bastards brings its own flair to the roguelike genre with fast-paced arena-styled battles and a unique blend of sci-fi and western vibes. The character variety, tight gunplay and strategic elements make it a fun ride, but the campaign's length and occasional repetitiveness do slow things down towards the end game. Visually though, it's striking with its comic book style aesthetic and the audio mostly hits the mark, even if the soundtrack could use a bit more intensity. Now, if you are a fan of roguelikes or looking for something with a lot of personality and creative enemy design, Wild Bastards is definitely worth a look. It is a solid game that may not hit every target, but when it does, it's a blast. For me today, it's scoring a good seven out of 10 and it definitely comes with a recommendation. So will you be checking out Wild Bastards? Let me know in the comments below. With that, hit subscribe, join us here for daily Switch content, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.